What's going on, guys? My name is Jamie Cheerio, and the purpose of this video is you just finished boot camp. What now? Um, I think that one of the main things I just want to talk about is that there's so much information in the boot camp. It's all so incredible, but you kind of have a full sponge right now. And what we need to do is we need to take the time to just quickly wring out that sponge and simplify everything that you need to get started. So that's what this video is really going to be all about. And what I've noticed is that this is where most people get held up. This is where most people get overwhelmed. This is where most people get stuck in what I call analysis paralysis. So really the intention of this video is just to help you guys get started as quickly as possible. So at this point, if you're watching this video, we're just kind of assuming that you've already completed boot camp. You've already submitted your contracts through SureLC and HCMS. If you haven't done those things, um, I would just recommend you turn off this video right now and go back and get those things done, and then you can come back and finish watching this. So I think our goal with this video is just to get people prepared for their first day. So I want to talk about the carriers. I want to talk about your contracts first. So at this phase, I would be checking my email every single day to see if you've received any welcome emails from the carriers. Um, these emails are really simple. They include your agent writing number, they include instructions to log in. So you wanna look for those, check your spam inbox, You know all of those things, look for those from the carriers. And the other thing you should be doing, and this is something that I did in the beginning, is you call the carriers every single day. Now that might be something you think is kind of annoying, but what it typically does is if you bother them enough every single day, at least for me, they get annoyed and they push you up in the process because they look at somebody who is anxious to get started somebody who's anxious to write business and they want to do business with people who want to get started fast. So there's nothing wrong with calling the carriers. I call them every single day until I got my writing numbers. So one of the things that I would also do, and I think this is really important, something I did in the beginning is I created a Google document or you could create a note in your phone on your computer that has all of your carrier info. Okay. This is super important. And I'll make sure that I include, you know, a picture of, you know, everything that we're doing here, but agent writing number should be included. You should have your username and your password to log into every single place. You should have a link to the quote tool. You should have a link to your e-apps and included in the comments below or included in the description below, there's going to be a link that has all of those e-app logins and all the quote tool links in one place. So look for that in the description. Um, you're going to want to have all the customer service phone numbers. I can't tell you how many times I'm in a home and something's going on. I want to have that customer service phone number or that customer service email. So all in one place. So I've got a Google document, Americo, customer service phone number, customer service email, my writing number, my username, my password, the link to the electronic application, the link to the quote tool, all in one place with every single one of my carriers in one go-to place. So you know, trust me when I say you're going to want to have it all in one place. I think the worst thing is talking to a client and you're given a product recommendation by your manager and then you have a technical difficulty that will mess up a sale so fast. You want to make sure that you're smooth. So I also recommend this is very important. You log in to every available carrier before your first day selling. You log in before. Don't wait until you're selling a policy for the first time to log in for the first time. We have some carriers that make you wait 24 hours before you can actually log in once you set up your account. So you want to make sure that you do that. So I'll tell a quick story about my first appointment. Um, I remember sitting down with this lady, Mary, lovely lady on an oxygen tank. Grady says AIG guaranteed issue whole life. I go to log into American General Life and guess what? My login's not working. I have the wrong agent code or agency number. And Grady says, you got to call the carrier. I ended up being at this house for three and a half hours and thank the Lord that Mary was so you know, gracious of me, but I had to spend time on the phone with the carrier because I didn't get prepared properly the night before. I didn't have all of my stuff in one place. So you want to just make sure that you're able to, again, increase credibility, reduce sales pressure. So these things happen. They happen on the home. They happen on the phones. Um, I had a mentor one time, especially when you have these different technical difficulties happen, it's not the end of the world. You can get through it. But I had a mentor, he said, you have to be like a duck, okay? You have to be like a duck. Calm on the surface, but under the water, you're flapping like hell. And I love that because I can't tell you how many times in the beginning I did have a technical difficulty. I wasn't able to log in, but I didn't allow myself to get flustered in the home or on the phone. The client had no idea what was going on, but under the water, I'm flapping like heck trying to figure it out. So um, you don't need every carrier to start. I think that's another thing. Um, if you start going through the contracting process, typically it takes between one and two weeks before you will get all of your agent numbers with the main carriers. 
We have an awesome company. You should be familiar with them at this point, Prosperity Life Group. They're a company that we love, and they can get us contract with our agents in 24 to 48 hours. So new agents can get started very fast, and we have dozens of agent success stories that they've started with just one carrier, and they've gone out and crushed it in their first week. I think one of the reasons that I love Prosperity is because you can get about 90% of the people that you sit with uh, coverage on day one, which is really amazing. So Prosperity, you know, even though we have this big brokerage of all these different companies, they have a whole life product called New Vista that can cover a healthy, a mid-level healthy, and a pretty unhealthy individual. Um, they have a term product called Family Freedom Term that can be used for younger, healthier clients who are looking for larger policies or they're looking for things like mortgage protection. Um, and in a perfect world, the best setup when you're first getting started, I would want to make sure I can cover every single client that I can sit with, but I don't want that 10% that I can't cover to keep me from getting in the field. But in a perfect setup, I'd have writing numbers for Americo, Prosperity, and American General Life. If I had those three writing codes, I know that I can hit every single client that I sit with, no matter what, I can serve them with a policy. We have all these other carriers. Of course, we want them. There are specialty situations of people that we're getting immediate coverage or discounts, whatever it is, based on their situation. Those will come. They're going to come in the next one to two weeks, but don't let that hold you back from getting started. I can't tell you how many people say, I didn't have one last agent code, so I've been waiting three weeks to get in the field. All you need is one. If you have prosperity, you're ready. If you have Prosperity, Americo, and American General Life, you're 100% set. Everything else is just a bonus. So the reason we love Americo Prosperity AIG for this situation is Americo, they can obviously cover the healthiest, they pay the best, and they're our favorite. That's just end of story. You know, we're not going to hide that Americo is our favorite. Prosperity, they're a great mid-level carrier. And what I mean is that if they can't get approved for Americo, I go to Prosperity. And then I've got American General Life, which is what's called a guaranteed issue whole life product. So if you have all three of these, you can take comfort in the fact that you don't need every single carrier to start. And they're just a bonus that will come with time. So after carriers, I think the next thing I want to go ahead and talk about is going to be leads. So you're going to want to go ahead and schedule a lead strategy session with your manager as soon as possible. At this point, you should have already had access to Gateway. Uh, Gateway has Sure LC. It has HCMS inside of it, and it also has a tab called the ILC. The ILC is the Integrity Lead Center. Some of you guys may have gone in there, clicked around, messed around already, but if you have not, go ahead and click on the Order Leads tab. Check out the heat map. Click down to your area and check out what's available. Um, we're going to cover in another video some lead strategy that's a little bit more in-depth in a later video, but for now, I would just recommend you get back with the person introduced you to Family First Life and get your up or your upline vice president who's a master of lead strategy. I'd get with them and I'd request that strategy session as soon as possible because we need to get leads in your hand as quickly as possible to help you get started as fast as possible. Your manager, when they get on that call with you, they're going to talk to you about what kind of leads are available in your area, how many leads that you should purchase for your first dial day. They're going to talk about your budget, what you can invest in your business, and they're going to determine if you're going to be going in person or if you're going to go the telesales route and do this 100% over the phone, and they're going to help you schedule your first dial day. That's very important. So now, you know, moving forward from leads, let's assume you've got your leads. Let's assume you've got your first dial day scheduled. What do you actually need to have prepared for your first dial day? And I think, first of all, I would make sure that whatever you need prepared, you get prepared the day before at minimum. Don't wait until your first dial day to get started. I can't tell you how many times that agents, they commit to starting at 8 a.m. and their leads aren't downloaded. They don't have a proper setup to dial. They don't start dialing until noon or later because they're messing around getting set up for so long. And they end up having a bad dial day because they didn't put time on their side. So I always want to get this set up at minimum the night before, if not the day before the night before. A couple things you want to do, obviously, and a lot of this was included in boot camp. You want to download Phone Burner. You should have learned about this in boot camp again. It's a great software. You know, it helps you dial faster and it helps you track your appointments. You know, make sure that you also go to phoneburneragencytraining.com and you watch the training on how to set up Phone Burner. People mess around with Phone Burner all morning on the day of their first dial day, 
and it really messes with everything. So it's going to teach you how to export your leads out of the CRM, and it's going to help you figure out exactly how to operate that system ahead of time. Mess around with it. Get comfortable with it before your first day. Then also you want to make sure that you have a live dial team to plug into for your dials. You know, dialing alone, it's very, very hard. Um, you need people to give you feedback on your first day. This is how you're going to cut the learning curve. And this is probably the most important thing to plug into and participate in. Obviously, you know, you can join us, livingHopeLiveDials.com, where we do in-person appointment setting as well as telesale appointment setting and, you know, one call closes. You can join FFLLiveSales.com, 100% telesales team. You can join DominationDials.com with Marissa Mazziotti. They do it all. Or you can join FFLSalesTeam.com with FFL Limitless, and they do it all as well, 100% telesales. So there's so many different dial rooms that you can join. My only encouragement would be that you find a dial room and you commit to it. And I also recommend scheduling your first dial day as soon as possible with your manager. And you want to schedule a time with your manager to do a very quick role play of your script. This is something that I recently started doing. It's been very powerful. It's nothing crazy. You know, my personal strategy is if it's your first dial day and you plan on starting at 8, let's jump in a Zoom breakout room at 7 a.m. And I'm just going to simply read the script to you first out loud as your manager so you can hear how I do it. And then you're going to read it out loud to me. Then you're going to read it again, and I'm going to try to interrupt you once or twice and see how you do and give you feedback. And then I'm going to have you read it a third time, and I'm going to interrupt you and give you a couple objections and see how you react. Um, this is powerful because we can make some very quick adjustments and it can give you some incredible confidence before starting dialing. So I've done this with a couple of agents over the last few weeks where I just spent a half hour before their first dial day. You know, I think guys, the little things are the big things. If you spend that half hour with a new agent before dial day and you give them confidence to get on the phones, I had a couple of agents that was their first dial day. We did that and, you know, they both came out and they had, you know, eight, 10, 12 appointments on their first day because they had confidence. And guess what? Because they had read the script with me and it wasn't the first time they were ever reading the script, they unmuted all day long and they got great feedback. So I just recommend that you do a quick role play with your manager before you start dialing. Um, but I want to talk a little bit about what you should have prepared before you set or after you actually have you know appointments ready. So you're getting ready to do appointments the next day. Obviously, if you're in telesales, it's very simple. You know, Just have your logins saved, all your links available every tool and resource bookmarked so that it's very easy for you to get to them. Now, if you're going in the home, it's a little bit more of a song and dance. This is my personal favorite thing to do. Telesales is amazing, but a lot of it's just over the phone. They're not seeing you. So presentation obviously does mean something when you go into the home. So I want to talk a little bit about what to bring in your bag. Um, some people get a little fancy with it, and you can get more fancy with it over time. You don't need to have a million things. You do not need to have every single carrier brochure you don't need to have every visual aid because it's really not a fancy presentation. I want to make sure that's per, you know, that's very, um, you know, you guys understand that. And I think we can talk about at minimum what you should be bringing into the home. So for me, I personally have a little laptop bag that I got at Staples that I sling over my shoulder, and it's got a couple slots, you know, for papers and brochures and folders and stuff like that. So, of course, inside my bag, I've got an iPad or a computer. You're going to need an iPad or a computer or a tablet to be able to run electronic applications for people to be able to sign on the screen. I do prefer an iPad because they can sign on the screen. If you've ever had a 70-year-old try to draw their signature with a mouse on your laptop, it's pretty rough. It's much easier for them to sign on the screen, so I recommend a laptop. Uh, I recommend an iPad. Um, I also have what are called credibility sheets. So credibility sheets, you can find these um, either on our website in the resources section or FFLamerica.com in the resources section. Ours is livinghopeffl.com. Check out the resources section. There's going to be credibility sheets, which have uh, all of the carrier logos on them that show you who you work with, that provides credibility. And you're also going to want to have financial inventory sheets. Financial inventory sheets is how we determine the need in the home, their health situation. It's how we what we send to our manager when we're looking for a product recommendation. I use something called the client profile sheet. This is what I take away. This is what I file away in my system when I'm done. It has the client's first and last name, their birthday, their address, their phone number, um, what product they bought, what company, what product, what was the premium, what was the death benefit, the policy number, so I can file that away for myself. So I've got things that I leave for the client, and I've got things that I take with me. So client profile is one of those things that I take with me. 
obviously you want to have some pens, some blank sheets of paper, blank sheet of paper simply to be able to draw out your you know, options for the client and slide it across the table. Um, I also have uh, my state license. So I have a little white binder that has um, two sleeves in it. On the front sleeve is my uh, state license. And on the back side is what's called our in-home agenda. In-home agenda also can be found on those same websites that we listed before, Living Hope FFL and FFLamerica.com in the resources section, but the in-home agenda. So you don't forget what to say. Very simple. There's a whole other video on the in-home agenda. Highly recommend using it if you're going to be in the home. Uh, I print out my lead cards very simply. You know, I go into the CRM. I click on the person's name who I booked an appointment with. I print out the lead card. If it's a direct mail, it's going to have their handwriting on it. It's going to be the a copy of the postcard they send. And if it's an internet lead, it's going to be a printout that has first, last name, address, phone number, et cetera. And I can slide that across the table and say, hey, can you verify that that was you that filled that out? Hey, can you verify that all that information is spelled correctly for me just to start the appointment? Um, I have business cards. I have a name badge. You don't need all of those things, but they're obviously great. You walk up with a name badge that says, you know, Grady Polson. Here's my license number, family first life underwriter, you know, field underwriter, medical underwriter, whatever you want to put on there. It's just credibility. And when I was in the beginning and I was not very confident, having a name tag made me feel like a superhero for some reason. I don't know why, but it just increased credibility. I felt like I was supposed to be there. Um, business cards, you know, I like to leave those behind if I sell a policy. If I don't sell a policy, I don't typically leave a business card behind because most people are never going to call you. They're never going to call you back. I'm just going to throw that out there. Follow-ups, most of the time I can count on one hand out of 2,000 appointments. How many people have said, hey, you're a great guy. We'll call you back next week and let you know we got to think about it. I can count on one hand how many people have ever called me back. It doesn't even fill the whole hand, okay? So business cards are great, but the whole I'm just going to hand out a business card to hand out a business card, maybe they'll call you back. They're never going to call you back. Business card because you are their insurance agent for life. Don't waste your business cards on people who want to think about it. Um, there's something called the 10 benefits to a final expense whole life plan, also in the resources tab. Very simple. When I was selling whole life, I didn't want to make it complicated. Almost every single whole life plan has the exact same benefits. When I was explaining it to the client before I showed the options, I'd slide this piece of paper across the table and say, hey, Mary, this never increases in price. It's permanent. The death benefit never changes. It doubles in the event of an accident. It's going to pay out tax-free. It avoids probate in court. It has living benefits, and it builds cash value. Does that all make sense? All right, perfect. Now I'm going to show the product recommendation. But I pitched her on whole life. I didn't pitch her on America whole life. I got her on the concept because maybe she gets denied with America, and I got to go a different direction. So 10 benefits to a final expense, you know, whole life sheet. The cheat sheet is great. There's another one that's the Americo cashback option benefit sheet. I love having that one with me because, again, if I'm going to sell term, I'm going to sell in cashback, you know, Americo, you know, HMS, CBO, or non CBO, that sheet has the living benefits, you know, terminal, critical, chronic illness. It explains it, explains what cashback looks like, it explains a mortgage protection plan or a term cashback plan. And I would slide that in front of the client knowing that even if they didn't get Americo, most of our other carriers with cash back and living benefits are about the same. So I would use that. Um, and then you got carrier brochures. Now, carrier brochures are free. You can call the carriers and just have them send them to your house. You say, hey, I want some America Eagle brochures. I want this brochure. I want that brochure. They're absolutely free and you should do it. I also want to disclaim with, I went over a year in this business without ever ordering a brochure. All that I used was the final expense cheat sheet and the Americo term cheat sheet. That's all that I ever used, okay? So you don't need brochures. Now I love brochures. I love leaving them behind if they become my client and only if they become my client because if they don't become my client, I don't want to waste brochures because I got to get more mailed out to me if I run out. So brochures are great. You should request them. America will send you nice folders for free. You know, Mutual of Omaha will send you everything they have, you know, accidental brochures, whatever you need, you know, uh, index universal life brochures, you can get whatever you want. And it's great to leave behind with the client because it does again, boost credibility because someone comes behind you in a home and tries to replace your policy. And you've now left behind a credibility sheet that has the carrier circle that you went with, with all the policy info, with a brochure in a folder with their name on it, with a business card, you are very credible. You have a legit policy. You didn't just leave behind a sticky note with a policy number and say, hey, figure it out. Policy's coming in the mail. So those are all great to have. And again, all of these things, all of these resources can be found on the website, livinghopeffl.com, ffllamerica.com, in the resources or downloads tabs of those websites. Um, so guys, all this stuff, most of it, 
you learned about a herd in boot camp. I think the intention of this video is to get you to understand that this is very, very simple once you get the ball rolling. Our system is simple. Number one, buy leads. Number two, dial the phone. Number three, get in the home or sell somebody or do a presentation over the phone. Number four, find out the client's why. Number five, go through the financial inventory. Number six, call your manager for a product recommendation. Number seven, close the policy. Number eight, rinse and repeat. Very simple. We just do that over and over again. Dial, buy leads, dial the phone, do a presentation, find out the why, financial inventory, call your manager for a recommendation, close, rinse and repeat. And I think it's important to note that the more that you do this in a short period of time, uh, when you're getting started, the more your confidence is going to move up quickly. I think that this business is way better to learn fast than slow. Um, you can figure this out quickly or you can take months to figure it out. And unfortunately, the longer that you take to figure it out, the more likely you are to not make it. If you don't make it and you don't figure, figure this out in your first 90 days, you're gone. Okay. The goal is for you to sit with or present to 100 clients as quickly as possible. And when I go back and I look at my numbers, it took me two and a half months to sit with 100 clients. And I felt like I learned things very, very fast. But then we have an agent, Peter Unger, who he came in and he sat with 100 clients in his first six weeks. So he did a month faster than me. And guess what, guys? In my first month, I helped 19 families. And in Peter's first month, he helped 53 families. So our goal is to get you out there and to get you failing as quickly as possible. And I think this is probably the most important part about this video that I need to make sure is very clear. You are supposed to fail. This is supposed to be hard. Um, you're supposed to get your butt kicked on the phone. That's how it works. Um, no one ever told you that this was going to be easy. If your manager told you that this was going to be easy, they lied to you and you should quit um, and work with somebody else. Um, this is commission-based sales. And we will find out very quickly in your first week if you're really cut out for this. I think the question that I'll ask you is if you really, really knew that, you know, if I really knew this was going to happen, if I learned this skill set, what would I be willing to do to learn that skill set? I personally, I'd be willing to run through a freaking brick wall to learn that skill set if that, I really, really knew that that was possible. So my question for you guys, but what would you be willing to give up to learn this information fast? Would you be willing to shut off Netflix for a year? Would you be willing to put away the golf clubs for a year? And when I say that, it's not forever, but just for a little while while you master this skill. And guys, you can also, you can learn this by yourself. You can do this on an island. You cannot plug in, but it's going to take you way longer and most likely you're going to quit. There are some people, very, very rare stories who've taught themselves how to sell life insurance all on their own. They've got their butt kicked for a long time before they figure it out. They've gone through some crazy trials and errors. And most people take that path, 99% of those people fail and they quit. Um, most people, they quit before they ever find out how good they can actually get at this business. So why wouldn't you want to avoid the landmines that others have hit before you? I think that's my main question for you. And here's the deal. Growing fast and avoiding our mistakes, it actually requires you to become incredibly uncomfortable. So if you want to grow fast, if you want to avoid our mistakes, it requires you to become incredibly uncomfortable in a short period of time. But again, it's not uncomfortable for a year. It's uncomfortable for a couple of dial days and field days. You can get all the uncomfortableness done in two weeks or less and figure this business out if you're willing to do it all up front. So what is being uncomfortable? It's unmuting on live dials. It's opening yourself up for criticism. It's calling your manager and checking in the middle of your first dial day and at the end of your dial day, checking in with them to get some feedback. It's calling your manager in and after every single appointment to find out what you could have done better or get some game film on what you did really well. You have to commit to becoming a student of the game here. I think that's the most important. You have to become a student of the game. You have to be willing to commit to grow your teachability, commit to grow your willingness to learn. I mean, you have to have a burning desire, like a burning desire to get better here, a burning desire to learn this information. Guys, we can help you take off like a rocket ship here. It's going to require you to stop overanalyzing. And it's going to require you to just get out there and fail, to fall over, to get bruised and bloody and make this thing happen. Every single person who is a fast success story here, 
They're the ones who realize that they can learn more from just doing than studying. Okay, I'm gonna say that again. The fastest success stories here are the ones who realize they can learn more from doing than sitting around studying. And this will be my last analogy. If me and you are walking down the street and we see a group of kids playing soccer and neither of us have ever played soccer before, we don't even know what soccer is. It's our first time even seeing the sport. How can we learn the quickest? So let's say me. I decide I'm going to watch every single YouTube video. I'm going to read every book. I'm going to study games about soccer. I'm going to ask my friends and family, hey, you know, dad, you know, Uncle Chris, have you ever played soccer? And I'm going to ask a million questions before I actually do anything. I'm going to analyze everything before I decide to try. But then you go, I'm just going to jump in and start playing. You fumble around, you mess up, you fall over, you bruise your knee. But guess what? In a couple of minutes, you figure it out. Now you're having fun playing soccer while I'm still sitting there and analyzing. Who learned faster? Obviously, the person who just decided to learn by doing. And one of the best things that Grady ever did for me in the beginning is he told me, dude, you just kind of got to mess your way through it. You just got to mess your way through it. You got to just get out there and figure it out. You got to fail. You got to mess your way through it. You will learn by doing. So you have to take action as quickly and as soon as possible. Um, There's a quote that says, a good plan violently executed is better than a perfect plan any day. So a good plan violently executed is better than a perfect plan any day. So some people, um, they hate that. They want to know everything ahead of time. But I just challenge you. I challenge you to just shut off your brain. I challenge you to trust the system. I challenge you to, challenge you to fall off the bike a couple times to get back up, to keep going. And guys, you're going to thank yourself uh, for getting it over quick, getting it over with quickly. So don't overthink it. Get at minimum everything you need for your first day. Get your first dial day on the calendar. Get some leads in your hand and let's go to work. If you have any questions, guys, you can always reach out. Um, we're always here for anything that you need. Guys, I look forward to your success here with Family First Life. You got this.